welcome back. We are talking horses with Elaine Cardillo. Elaine, we've talked about the nature of the horse. Mm -hmm. We've caught the horse. Now it's time to begin developing the relationship with the horse. Right. She's got a personality. You've got a personality. <laughs> got to kind of work it all out. Exactly. You do this in a round pen. Mm -hmm. Monty Roberts calls it join up. Ray Hunt calls it hook on. Other people call it latching on. It's called all sorts of things. Right. What exactly are we doing? It's basically, and you're right, they all have different names for it, but it's all basically the same principles. And the principles are based on what a wild herd of horses will do. In a herd in the wild, the lead mare is the one who makes all the decisions, and she's also the discipliner of any subordinate horses that make any kind of infractions within the herd. So if a younger horse or a subordinate horse makes some sort of infraction, what she'll do is she'll send that horse out of the herd which to a wild horse is a death sentence, Absolutely, as we know. Sure. And she'll do that with her body language. She'll put eyes on eyes. She'll look straight at him. She'll kind of drive him out with her body. And at that point, the horse starts circling the herd, asking permission to come back in, which is why we use the round pen, because it mimics that same type of circling. And what's going to happen is, as the horse is circling, it's going to start communicating. And once the signs of communication are clear that this horse is really ready to come back in, it's my job as the lead mare to kind of turn my shoulder away and say, okay, come on in, it's time. And you're going to, as you're doing this, you're going to let us know mm -hmm. what the body language is, what, what the ears and the head, you know, dropping, exactly. the ears turning and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Exactly, so, right. All right, well, so go to it, go okay. horse around. Okay. <laughs> now, as you said, there's all different names for this, and there's all different ways of going about it, although the principles are pretty much the same. What I like to do is, I always like to put the horse in the round pen first, just to kind of let it get its bearings. And also just to give the horse a chance to relax and it gives me an opportunity to kind of read the horse and see what's going on. Well now Sasha looks pretty relaxed. She's pretty relaxed, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now the thing is, if she turns to me and follows me, I really don't have a reason to send her off because she's already joined up with me. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna wait for her to do something that I don't want her to do. Yeah, because right now she's already looking at you. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. So all she needs to do is look away, sniff the ground, anything like that. Okay, so now the fact though, the fact that she's looking at you, that means she's joined up with you? Well, it means that she's being respectful of me. Okay. So, you know. And now Sasha's your horse, so that's probably why. Okay, but now she just went down to the ground. Exactly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send her out. I'm going to say, time to go. And I don't really care if she walks off, trots off, canters off. It doesn't really matter to me. All I'm asking her to do is to just move away from me. Because as the lead horse, which I'm hoping to be, as long as she's willing to move as I approach, she's yielding to me, and that's what I want. So I just came up one notch on the leadership ladder. Once I get her to the point where she's consistently moving away like she is, I'm gonna start asking for a direction. So I'm gonna cut across the arena. Oh, now she just shook her head there, though. What was that? That's a bit of defiance. That's a bit of, I really don't like you telling me what to do which is okay. She still did it anyway. <laughs> and if you notice, her ear is already locked on me. That inside ear is noticing everything I'm doing. The outside ear is twitching around, picking up other so sounds from other places. She's already starting to lick and chew a little bit. I'm gonna change directions again. Ask her to keep moving. Oh. Feeling a little frisky, Sasha. Well, Sasha, you should also know, is a bit of an unconfident horse. She worries a lot. So me asking her to move off like that got her a little worried. I'm gonna change direction again. So now that she's moving in the directions that I want her to, and she's moving away from me as I approach, and you can see how small the circle's already gotten. What I'm gonna ask for now is speed. So I'm gonna bring up my energy, kind of square my shoulders, kind of march a little more, and ask her to really move. Now 
And I do have to be careful in here. It is a little slippery. She's licking and chewing as she's cantering. So for her own safety, I'm actually gonna bring it down now because I got what I was asking for. And I'm just gonna ask her to trot. And the way I do that is I soften my body. I slow my steps down, I soften my shoulders. My whole energy changes to a slower pace so it's not as aggressive. And look how small this circle's gotten. Now what I'm looking for is not only licking and chewing, but I'm gonna hope that she lowers her head. And lowering the head could be lowering its no her nose all the way to the ground. It could just be lowering her head below her withers. But that's a clear sign of submission when they lower their head. And she's licking and chewing, and the fact that she just let out a snuffle is also a sign that she's releasing adrenaline. So she's coming down off of adrenaline. She's getting back into a learning frame of mind.